Like a lot of people, I'm a big fan of cheese. I eat cheese almost every day for lunch, and I love to experiment with different cheeses. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a cheese connoisseur. I haven't tried that many fancy French cheeses, but I love a good creamy cheese like goat and brie, and I love a hard, sharp cheese like a manchego. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I don't really love those like gamey, moldy cheeses. Like, I like a little bit of blue cheese, but not too much, and I really don't like Roquefort. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so I was very happy when I had a client request a cake that looked like a board of cheese. Just a little sad that I couldn't eat all the cheese because it was cake. My name's Melissa and I'm an artist. I create cakes, sculptures, and a lot of other cool things. This cake is going to look like a round wood board. And on top, we're gonna to have a bunch of fancy French cheeses, as well as sausage and some anchovies. <laughs> All sculpted in cake and chocolate. But I'll let you see for yourself. Let's create this cake. I first started with sculpting the anchovies and they're really thin and small, so there's not really much room for cake in there. So they're just made from modeling chocolate. I roll out a thin long piece, press it down, shape it into a little flat half of a fish. <laughs> and then I sculpt all those little details, the scales, those beady eyes, the little thin translucent tails to create a bunch of little anchovies for this cake. Set those aside to dry and I'm ready to move on to the actual cake of the cake. This is a vanilla cake with a salted caramel buttercream. Mm -mm -mm. It's one 10 inch tier that I cut in half, fill with buttercream, frost, and then apply a thin layer of chocolate ganache to give it a perfect round shape, nice smooth surface, and that will maintain all of the freshness inside. I'll set my cake in the fridge till I'm ready to use it later and it's time to start prepping all of my cheeses. Each of my cheeses and the sausage is going to be cut from cake. I made templates beforehand for each of the different types of cheeses. So I just cut out those templates and use them to trace out the exact shape in cake. Then I'll carve a little bit, stack the ones that need to be stacked, and then give each one a layer of chocolate ganache to keep in all of that moisture. Now, I'm gonna pronounce all the names wrong, but let's start. We've got the Comte, the Mimole, the Sausage, which is just sausage. <laughs> then there will be an Epos and a Saint Marceline. So four cheeses, one sausage. I cover the front of the Mimolette with a piece of fondant, and then the outside is going to be covered in modeling chocolate because the modeling chocolate will allow me to sculpt all of those little dots to create that very porous surface on the outside of the Mimolette cheese. It's very beautiful and almost like a sandy rock coral texture. It's fascinating how it gets that way. I also made a few slices on the side, so it'll be sliced on the board. Next up, we have the A plus cheese. This one reminds me a lot of brie. On the outside, it's got all these little indented wrinkles. The inside, it's very soft cheese, so I want it to look like it's kind of squeezing out a little bit, oozing out. And on the top of it, we have these straight lines across that I guess is created in the process of making it. And I look at images of the exact cheeses as I go so I can get a realistic copy because I really want this to look like a realistic cheese board. I want my client's mouth to be watering when he sees this Yum. because it makes him want to eat some of that savory cheese. And then he'll cut into the sweet cheese board of cake and enjoy it on his birthday. Happy birthday. Third in line, we've got the Saint Marceline cheese. Much easier name to say, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself too much. And this one's a really wrinkly texture. I create a little border of modeling chocolate around the top edge to give it that effect that it's like indenting inwards in the center. And since it's very small, I did one small one and then one half one as well. Lastly, in the cheese department, we have the Comte cheese. And I use a sponge and press it into that chocolate to recreate this almost rock, earthy type texture on the outside of the cheese. For the Comte, we also have a few slices of cheese. I wanted the cake to have personality with different colors, textures, and then also playing around with different cheeses being sliced or cut in half or just have a little wedge popping out. And all of that's gonna make this cake very visually interesting to look at. With my cheeses sculpted, it's time to cover up that cake and give it that wood painting all around. So I just cover it in a piece of white fondant, and then I'm going to use gel colors and create a wood-like texture on the whole outside of the cake because I want it to look like a wood cutting board or plating board that you can cut the cheese on top of. First, I give the board a nice light wash of light brown watered down paint all around, and then I go in with some much darker golden brown on top in different brush strokes to create that wood-like grain texture. I have a whole tutorial on an even more realistic way to make fondant look like wood on my channel. I'll link it over here and you can watch that afterwards if you want to know how to make a super realistic wood board for your cheese or just any type of cake. 
We're gonna let the board dry and now it's time to finish up our meats and cheeses. Starting off with my sausage. To make the realistic marbleized texture of the inside of that sausage, we want it to look like a fatty meat. I take some maroon fondant and roll it with some white modeling chocolate. And as I spiral it together and then press it into a ball and then roll it out, it looks exactly like a realistic marbleized texture of meat. I'm gonna have my sausage be cut into a few little slices so I can make sure to cut out those circles of slices. And then I'm gonna cover the whole outside of the sausage with the white modeling chocolate. And I'm gonna sculpt in all of that texture. To make the anchovies look super realistic, I incorporate some silver metallic paint into the gray paint that I'm using to paint their bodies. So that way it's gonna look nice and shiny and metallic, like an actual anchovy with all these scales on top. To get those super beady eyes, it's important to get that accurate black outline that arounds them. It makes them look super flat and pressed into the body, which is kind of how they actually look. So it works really well. <laughs> The St. Marceline cheese is pretty much all white, but it's got this very powdery texture to it. So to make the surface look super powdery and matte, I'm going to use cornstarch after I've painted it all white, and I dab that cornstarch onto the wet surface and it sticks onto it and it creates this very matte, powdery, realistic texture. The Apoise cheese has a yellowish tint on the top, and then on the sides, it gets a little bit more brownish orange. And then in the inside of the cheese, it's very white. I just had so much fun painting these cheeses to make them look super realistic and accurate with the color and really bring them to life. I started getting really excited to plate them all on that wood cake board at this point. The Comte cheese is very pale and yellow on the inside and the rind on the outside is a very light sandy brown. My favorite cheese to paint was the Mimolette cheese. Because it is so orange, very vibrant and deep, I really got to have fun with all that orange on the inside, a little bit of an ombre, it gets lighter in the center and darker towards the rind. And then on the outside, it blends between oranges and whites. And once I painted it, those recessive porous areas really popped and came to life. Lastly, it was time to paint the sausage, which is a mixture of brown and white on the outside. And in this case, it also has a very powdery matte texture. So again, I went in and used that cornstarch and dabbed it all around once I painted it to make it look super matte and powdery. I was a little bit sad as I was making this cake because I've never tried any of these cheeses before. And I kind of thought I should have just gone and bought actual pieces of them so I could look at them and copy them in real life and also get to enjoy them after. The most satisfying part of creating this cheese board cake was plating. I loved rearranging all the different pieces that I created on the board. I wanted it to look super organic and not purposely place too much, but there was a front to the cake, so I made sure that all of the centers of the cheeses were facing a little bit towards one direction so that when you look at it, you could see the inside and the outside of each of the cheeses because I paid a lot of attention to detail there, so I wanted it to show. And in the end, I was blown away with the cake. I was so proud of it. I thought it looked so realistic, so deliciously savory, but sweet on the inside. I'm in love with texture and detail, so creating all these different cheeses with all these different colors and textures and surfaces was such a dream for me. I feel like when you look at this cake, you can see just how much fun I had creating it. I was most surprised with how realistic those anchovies looked. There wasn't much to them, a little bit of sculpting, a little bit of painting. They looked so realistic. I feel like I should make another anchovies cake, like a can of anchovies. <laughs> My clients were so happy to receive this cake. Since her husband was such a cheese lover, this was the perfect birthday cake for him. Yeah! And as a cheese lover myself, I was a little bit sad to say goodbye but I forever had the memory and beautiful photos of this cheese board cake. And to this day, it's one of my most favorite cakes that I've ever made. I think if I were to make another cheese board cake, it would look even better because I can make the wood look even more realistic now that I've got this new technique developed. And I guess you could say I'm an experienced cheese sculptor at this point, so I can make those cheeses look crazy realistic, even though I think they look pretty realistic in this cake as well. Would you like to see me make another cheese board cake? And if so, what type of cheeses should I put on the board? If you enjoyed watching me create this cheese board cake, please give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for so many more cool cake and art videos to come. If you'd like to see the entire process of me creating this cake from start to finish with no cuts, you can check that out on my Patreon linked below along with a lot of other cool perks. Thank you for following along with me on this cheesy journey and I'll see you in the next video.